All right, we are back with another D and D movie time, and tonight we will be watching Bill and Ted face the music. Um, so Cora, what do you remember from the last Bill and Ted movie, Bogus Journey? So Bill and Ted, well, parents remember who's saying um, that married the princesses. But then the worst enemy sent two evil versions that look like them, Bill and Ted, sent after them to kill them and then ruin their whole entire reality. That's why Bill and Ted's music in the history is completely gone and it's all his. And since you I, don't want to I said it in Bill and Ted's bogus journey. I said I was talking about Bill and Ted's tour. Nothing happens with the history. They just get killed by evil robot Terminator versions of them. I know, but I'm saying what he was planning. Oh. Well, you didn't make that clear with what you said. I said what he was planning. Did you not? It would change the future. It wouldn't change all of history. It would just change the future. So he would be in charge. So, do the robots succeed in killing Bill and Ted? Yes, but... Then what happens? Since I don't want to make this too long, they go ahead and escape a nightmare room. De they go ahead and challenge Death at Free Games. And they get out, go to heaven, somehow it's death in heaven. I don't know how that's even possible. They go ahead, meet the two scientists slash one biggest brain scientist ever, and say the funny line. Station. What do you think the smartest people are also the human? Uh. And they go a couple scenes later because I don't want to make this too long. Uh, they go ahead, they will get robots on themselves, and they go ahead, bad for such good, mini short fight. Okay. Toilet fight. I tried to take everything off that chair, and she still found something to play with. And, um,. They, and then Bill and Ted go ahead. Do they, so and, and they won, her. right? We already did that in the review. You don't have to go that step by step, Chief. Okay. So then they go back to life and they win. Okay, so moving on to Bill and Ted face the music. Um, before we get into it, I just want to say um, I had reservations going into this movie, which I'll dive more into during my score. 
I was looking forward to this, but at the same time, the more information that came out, I wasn't looking forward to it. It was a 50-50 for me, so I was on the fence going in. But I have seen this before, and I think this will be like my second time. So I'll probably be viewing it more critically this time. Um, Cora, I think, has only seen bits and pieces. I don't think she watched it with me the first time I watched it, so. Alright, let's just go ahead and jump right into Bill and Ted Face the Music. Your wife suggested couples therapy. Do you think this is what they had in mind? Go to heaven and heaven. <laughs> How's it going, Billy? Party on, dude. Yeah, Billy! Yeah. How you doing? Well, you know, dead and we're in hell. But how you doing? We're good. All right, so we just finished. Bowing Ted's face to music. What's this movie about, Cora? So Bo and Ted are trying to make music to save the world to make a new world. And they go ahead and one of the um, future's dazzle, I don't know what her name was, I forgot. I'm just going to call her future daughter because why not? Rufus's daughter, Kelly. Kelly. Not. Never mind. <laughs> and they go Kelly goes ahead, get down. Well. Well, Bill and Ted's dolls will just watch. You don't have to go into every detail of the scenes, Cora. Just say what's well, generally said what happens. The details. Yeah, but you're going too far into the details. At least it helps them understand. Anyways. Come on. They go ahead and Bell and Ted travel to a one reality well they go away where they are some sort of bad and two pe and they tell a whole story that the, the princess has left them. Uh, what are they trying to do? You haven't said what they're trying to do. Why are they going to, to see other versions of them? To go ahead and steal the song because they have to go ahead and get to a specific place at a specific time and, s and make us perfect song, the most amazing song ever. Okay. Kid from Sam Lot. <laughs> Are you gonna continue? Okay, well since so she's got a case of the giggles, I'll continue. So Bill and Ted they keep trying to go further and further into their own future to find the song. Uh, meanwhile, their daughters start going around and collecting historical musical figures like uh, Louis Armstrong, Jimi Hendrix, Mozart, and some others in order to put together the greatest band to help their father. And they all end up dead and they have to go settle things up with death so he'll take them back and basically 
when they get to back to the present, they just happen to be in the right spot, and they figure out how they're going to save the music or save the world through music. Okay, okay, okay. I'm done with my case. Okay. Well, anyways, that was Bill and Ted face the music. Uh, ultimately, they do end up saving the universe. And the, and they, I guess the thing comes true. And uh, they made the most awesome song that I have ever heard in my entire life. But, um. But it's not the best comedy song. But anyways, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will give our final scores. And with that said, we'll see you in a minute. For thousands of years, the world has been protected by the Guardian of Light, or as he is more commonly known, Santa Claus. Over the centuries, factors such as fear and prejudice, greed and jealousy, misunderstandings, betrayal and war have segregated most humans from the magical world of elves, fairies, wizards, and the like. This has resulted in many misconceptions and generalizations of the true nature of Santa and his world. This six-book series by Sean Connaughton begins as the current of a long series of Guardians is murdered by a group of monstrous enemies recently escaped from an enchanted South Pole prison. These creatures are loyal to the darkness, an evil force determined to exterminate the light in order to enslave all creatures of the world. Shane Connor, an average young man, suddenly finds himself being trained as the new Guardian. As he adapts to his new life among fantastic creatures, he goes on an adventurous quest with a legendary wizard for the ultimate weapon to use against the darkness, and faces murderous enemies like Rasputin, Morgana Le Fay, Krampus, and many more. Along with his best friend, Joe Gomez, Shane encounters politics, history, mysterious murders, new loves, his own hidden past, and racial dynamics among the fantasy races that turn out to be all too real. Their adventures reveal the true nature of the world and challenge the current state of how all races interact. This series expertly melds myths, legends, history, faiths, folklore, and secret societies into a fascinating, cohesive, comprehensive world of wonder and magic. From Atlantis to Olympus, from Hades to the moon, and from broomstick races to Christmas deadlines, join the new Santa Claus on his amazing journey. But beware! Will Shane's quest achieve his ultimate goal of destroying the darkness and preserving the light of the world? Or is he actually playing right into a plot by dark forces that will result in his, and our, ultimate doom? So make your list and check it twice for the Guardian of Light book series. Download your audiobook or ebook today from Audible, Amazon, or iTunes. All right, so Cora, Bill and Ted face the music on a scale of one to ten. What would you give this movie? Definitely a ten out of ten. This movie was so awesome, especially the end where they literally played the music. But like I said, still not the best comedy movie. Music. The Mario movie will. Basil Seeds is still the best comedy music I've ever heard. Okay. Did you have a favorite character? I would probably say the two Bella and Ted's daughters, but if I had to choose between one, I think Bella's. I think they're like most funny, but I think Bear was the most funny. Or was it Ted? I don't know. I don't know. Favorite characters. They both get me mixed up, but. I thought you were going to say Dennis. But we don't really, really see him much. We only like see him. And then he is obsessed with telling everybody his name. Him and him. My name is Dennis. Him and him and him and uh, you can do your school life by telling how many times I see Dennis. No. Just, okay, come on. Uh, did you have a favorite scene? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I 
the end where they're playing all the music? Because you've mentioned that a couple times. Yes. Okay. Is there anything else you want to say about this movie before I move on to my school? Giving you every chance here. If they asked me to act, or my dad to act in this movie, even though I probably wasn't born yet, neither were you. You were born when it. Chorus, can I? Chorus, Chorus. But if they asked me or my dad to act in this movie, I would have most likely said yes. Hmm. I don't know about my dad, but I would have probably said yes. Alright. So, moving on to my score. For Bill and Ted Face the Music, being how I would have rated this probably to begin with, Versus a rewatch, how I'd rate it now, being a little bit more critical and a little bit more open-minded. Um, I'd have to give this movie a 6 out of 10. How dare you? Well, uh, the reason why I give it a 6 out of 10 is because of the fact that it came out when wokeness and left ideology was really starting to ramp up so that turned me off from it I always would have loved the idea of a Bill and Ted 3 but this one it kind of just like erased the whole idea that Bill and Ted were the one who saved like became these great leaders and it's it's really confusing because of the fact, like, they're like, oh, we don't know how it's going to happen. You're just going to do it. And it's like, this is freaking history. This is why history is so important. You're telling me you didn't keep track of history? Please put that down. Um, you didn't keep track of history. You don't know what the song is that... They played to save music, to save the universe and become these great leaders. That makes no sense at all. Um, and throughout this movie, they actually were calling it a prophecy. In the future, they were calling this thing that has already supposedly happened a prophecy. A prophecy is a future event. Something that's going to happen in their future, not in their past. And so they should know exactly what the effects, what needs to happen. That was kind of what was laid out, like with Rufus and them going to the future. You know, they didn't get told this is what you got to do and this is how you got to do it. They just said you are going to do this thing that's going to unite us all. And this movie just kind of glosses over that and kind of does it a piss poor job now the acting by Bill and Ted themselves was good it wasn't great there were moments where their original character shined through but there were also moments where it just felt like they were phoning it in um, I also did not like the fact that they kind of you know and when I said earlier that it was like at the peak of wokeness and everything. I did not like the fact that they changed Bill and Ted's kids to be girls just cause. And like the Council of Elders. It wasn't like a f even split. It was most... There was like four women and one guy. Whereas before I think there was like... Two men and one woman. And they didn't even look like the same people. And everything rides on you remembering who Rufus is because George Carlin unfortunately had passed away by this point. But now we're dealing with Rufus's daughter and Rufus's wife, who's now a widow. 
and she's the head of the council and everything. And like, okay, that doesn't make sense because Rufus wasn't even the head of the council. It was some African American dude with sunglasses. Like, watch the first movie. And that dude actually looked like uh, Wesley Snipes, in my opinion. With a flat top. But it just seemed very ridiculous at times. And it felt like a lot of it was just like phoned in. And whoa. I still enjoyed it. But I just didn't enjoy it as much. Now, the graphics and the, you know, CGI were massively upscaled. It definitely felt like they had a much bigger budget than they did with Bogus Journey. But it's the writing and the, sorry to say, somewhat laziness of the acting that just did not do it for me. I felt a much better connection to John Wick or any of the John Wick movies or um what's that other one it's right on the tip of my tongue oh Matrix the way Keanu Reeves brought back Neo even though like Neo is supposed to be dead in the fourth Matrix movie that felt like he put more effort into that than some of the effort that was put in here. Like I said, you do have moments where those original characters shine through a little bit. But it's just not on the same level as it was with, like, Bogus Journey. So, and it definitely didn't live up to excellent adventure, so... I'm glad I got to see it. I'm glad we have it. It's a great conclusion but it needed better writing it needed better thought it needed maybe a little bit more of the kinks worked out and a little bit more effort on pretty much all the actors i'd say the best two actors in the movie was probably the princesses who i believe were actually way more included in this one and better characters than we've seen them throughout the entire series. Because they had more to do here. So. But that's going to go ahead and wrap this up. We are finally done with the Bill and Ted franchise. And I hope they never make any more. So. Oh, how dare you? <clears throat> well, nothing can live up to the original. I don't want to see them recast it with new people. So. I mean, maybe they will. Who knows? They like to do tons of remakes anyway. But that's going to go ahead and wrap up this review. We will see you all in the next episode. Please be sure to... Like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. And, and please watch the rest of... Please watch the rest of the Bill and Ted videos that we made. And also watch... The movies, they're literally so awesome. Yeah. In my opinion. Uh, Alright, that's going to wrap this one up. We'll see you all in the next one. Bye.